Writing is especially challenging for ESL students. Most students tell me that that's the hardest skill to learn. It's the skill they have the least practice with and the skill that they're most uncomfortable with. But it's important because giving the students opportunity for writing is something that's going to improve the level of their fluency. It's important to teach process writing in ESL because students need to feel successful. And all of us know that when we write a first draft, we don't always feel successful about it. We're self-conscious about mistakes, and we need to realize that writing is a process, that we move from our initial writing to final drafts, and that we see writing as a continuum. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? How's the weather today? It's beautiful. It's sunny. It's a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. We're talking today about skills. Since the goal of the writing lesson is for students to write about skills, the first thing we talked about was skills, and we generated a list of skills. I worked with the students to brainstorm a list of skills, which then I wrote on the board. Can you play soccer? Yeah. Play? Before. <laughs> Before. <laughs> Let's read these together. Everyone, please repeat. I can cook. I can cook. I can drive a car. I can drive a car. I can play ping pong. I can play ping pong. I can play soccer. I can play soccer. 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 And uh, then we started thinking about the idea of work skills versus life skills. Okay, now some skills are work skills. We talk about work skills. Uh -huh. These are skills that you have when you work. Mm -hmm. Some skills we call life skills. The purpose of that activity, again, was to sort of claim the vocabulary, to be using the vocabulary, and also for students to really be thinking about whether they had various skills or not. Use your computer. Daniel Saifu. Okay. Let's see, why don't we do this? Uh, I think uh, it's uh, uh, to get uh, life skill. Life skill? Yes. The next step in the lesson was for students to read a model for the writing. And the models are so important. At every level, students need a model for writing. And the model was in the form of an email for their own writing. Is this a letter? What is it? Exercise B. A letter? Mm, what is it? Email. It's an email. Yeah, this is an email. Do you? Sometimes send email? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I send emails too. I want you to read the email, and then we're going to answer two questions at the bottom. Please read the email. Life. Life Models are so important for students because there are many different kinds of writing tasks. Sometimes students have facility writing, but they aren't used to a particular style of writing. And at the beginning level, students follow the model very closely and almost copy the model, and we think that that is just fine. After reading the model, students had to write answers to two questions about the model. The purpose of that activity was for students to begin generating the language that they would be using in the follow-up writing. After the modeling activity, we went to some actual writing, what I would call pre-writing chunks, sentences related to skills and workplaces. I generated a list of four questions which we used to discuss the model. And then I used similar four questions as a prompt for my own writing, and I generated another model related to my own life, and I talked about my own job, my own workplace, and my own skills. I am a teacher. The purpose of this activity was to provide yet another model 
one that they could relate to very closely. So now the students have two models that they can be looking at when they begin their own writing. I'm going to ask you to write at home. This will be homework. Today I assign the writing as homework. There are advantages in doing it that way because we maximize our class time and use the class time more efficiently. Another way to do this writing is to have students write in class. They'll have questions, I'll be able to circulate, help them answer the questions. In some cases, they'll ask their classmates for help and uh, use dictionary and all the resources that they can in the classroom. After the students finished their writing, there was a peer review activity which actually involved three different parts. The first part was students reading their work out loud to their partner. I have a bus driver license in the USA. I can drive a bus. Wow. <laughs> wow. Drive a bus. My name is Hua. I am a student. I study English at John Arden. The second part was students exchanging papers, reading their partner's work silently. And then the third part was the opportunity for students to comment on their partner's work and make suggestions for corrections. <laughs> the follow-up activity to peer review would be students working on their writing, making revisions, making corrections as to mechanical problems, maybe changing, adding content, and uh, generally making a second draft. The last step in the writing process is something that we call publishing. The purpose of the publishing step is so that students realize they are writing for an audience. Someone is going to read their work. It can be something more complex like posting the student's work around the room so students can walk around and see the different works. It can also mean making binder with students' works or publishing on the internet and so on. Using process writing in the classroom is very helpful to students because it gives them the sense from the beginning that writing is a process, it's a movement, it's something that evolves, it's something that grows, it's something that can always be improved on. I can swim, mm -hmm. I can ride bicycle, okay? Oh, yes. <laughs> You're very good.